Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to French Asylum United Methodist Church. It is so wonderful to see you all here this morning. I am Pastor Damien, and I just want to welcome you personally to, to church service this morning and worship with us, or worshiping with us. Uh, for announcements this morning, I will start off by saying that tomorrow evening at 6 p.m., we have the Building Upon This Rock Bible Study, which will be held at uh, First United Methodist in the parlor. Uh, I figured that was the most uh, comfortable place to do a Bible study out of the three churches that I have, and realizing that the basement at North Tawanda and the Grand Chal at Liberty Corners or in a sanctuary was probably not the best place for a Bible study. So uh, 6 p.m. at First United Methodist Church there in the parlor, um, and that will run for approximately six weeks. Um, I'll be able to get you uh, materials and stuff tomorrow as I finish printing them. Um, so anyways, you're invited. everyone is invited to that who wants to come. Um, also, this coming Friday is the Liberty Corners Soup Cook-Off. Um, and we still need people to come and enter a soup in for that if you would like. Uh, all you need is a crock pot of soup, a recipe, and to just come and be present. Or if you're not a soup cook, if you are a soup taster, we also need judges to come and help us uh, judge soups and figure out which ones are the best by taste um, so that we can prepare for the Liberty Corner soup sales. Also, yesterday, I would like to also announce that yesterday we did have the chicken barbecue. It went exceptionally well. Um, we raised about $1,100 for the Keene family within those three or four hours. Um, and everyone who had some of the barbecue chicken said it tasted amazing. So uh, Joey actually really outdid himself with Brian and the rest of the crew that were there, as well as all the North Tawanda people. So um, it's, uh, it's, for those of you who were able to get there and get some, congratulations, I'm sure you enjoyed it. Uh, and for those who could not, uh, I suppose there'll be a next time. And I do encourage you to come and get that. And the other announcement that I will make this morning is that in exactly two weeks from today, on October 29th, it is our charge conference, which will be held at 2 p.m. downstairs in North Tawanda. Um, you are all strongly encouraged to come to that. Um, some of you should even be required to come to that in some ways, but uh, you know I can't really force you to be there. But I do want to enforce how important it is for you to show up for charge conference if you are at all available. And I think with that, we can rise and start our morning worship with our opening hymn, Come, Ye Sinners Poor and Need, found on page 3. <laughs> Oh uh -huh. 
this opportunity to come and to be in your presence, to worship you, and to honor and glorify you for all that you have done in our lives. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the invite that you have extended unto us to come and feast as a part of your heavenly banquet. We thank you for the opportunity that we have before us to go out into the world, into the highways and the roads of life, and to invite as many as we can find into your presence. Gracious Lord, be with us now as we worship. Amen. A great wedding feast has been prepared, and the guests invited. Some that God has invited to the feast have declined. Thus God continues to call others to his banquet. We, we have, have been invited to the feast at the behest of our Lord. May we prepare ourselves to enter into his feast. May, May we be dressed in the robes of Christ, like a bride adorned for her husband. Please rise and join me in the historic creed of our faith, the Apostle. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified in heaven burial. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We ask that you be with the leaders of our country, of the world, 
and of our church, that you would guide them in your infinite wisdom, that they may be lights unto us for your path of righteousness. We ask that you be with all of those who are unmentioned, who are struggling with illness of any form, that you would work in their lives to bring them healing, that you would offer your healing touch through the hands of their care providers and your comfort to the hearts of those who support them and are concerned for them. We lift up all of those who are currently struggling from natural disasters such as the fires in California, from war or famine, and ask that you work in their lives and work in their darkest hours to bring your good, to reveal your light and yourself to them, to give them faith and hope and courage. We ask that you be with all of those who are affected by the Las Vegas shooting and those who have been affected by such tragedies that you would work in their lives and that you might redeem the horrible and evil acts for good, that you might bring faith where there was pain, that you might bring hope where there was loss. Gracious Lord, we pray for all of those who struggle with any form of ism, whether sexism, racism, ageism, that you would help eliminate the sins from their hearts and free them from those chains, free them for a life of love as you love. And gracious Lord, finally we ask that you be with us and change our hearts, mold us into being more like you. May we be a people whose hearts break for the people your heart breaks for. May we be a people who seeks out the community around us, who seeks out the lost, the lonely, and invites them into your kingdom as you once invited us and those who have gone before us. Gracious Lord, it is for all these things we pray as you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, will the ushers please come forward and receive this morning's offering. Thank you. as are there, and invite them into your relationship, 
your community, and your kingdom. It is for these things we pray. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 106, found on 829. You may be seated for our psalm. Worthy. 
Go therefore to the main highways, and as many as you can find there, invite to the wedding feast. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered together all they found, both the evil and good, and the wedding hall was filled with dinner guests. But when the king came to look in over the dinner guests, he saw that there was a man there who was not dressed in wedding clothes. And he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without wedding clothes? And the man was speechless. Then the king said to his servants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is Gather Us In. Found on 2236 in the blue light. that a king 
wished to throw for his son's wedding. And the king had invited many to come to that feast, and as the time for the feast approached, he noticed that the guests were not showing up. Now we can imagine that the Pharisees realized quite quickly that the king in the story is God, and that the guests that he is referring to most likely were them. And as they didn't show up, the king sends out more and more servants to, to get them to come to the wedding feast, to tell them that the banquet is prepared, salvation is at hand. Just as God had sent the prophets into the world to tell the people that God was there, that God was working in the world. And yet the people still do not come to the feast. The people still did not come when they heard the prophets. And he continues on and says that some of those who heard the slaves, who heard the servants, some chose to go home to their farms. Others chose to return to their work. And still others chose to ignore the slaves and to beat them, to kill them. And they did not attend the feast. And this behavior, this rejection of God's gracious invite, of the king's gracious invite, upset the king. And he sent his armies and allowed the, the people that he invited, the people who were supposed to be his friends, the people who were supposed to know him the best, he sent his armies and destroyed them. And instead, seeing that the banquet was prepared, seeing that it was time for the feast, he sent his servants out once more and told them to go to the highways and to the streets and find as many as you can and invite them to the feast. I can imagine the Pharisees sitting there and hearing how Jesus invites the tax collectors and the sinners and the prostitutes and all these other people that the Pharisees didn't approve of. How Jesus has been teaching them that the kingdom of God is at hand and the kingdom of God is theirs to be had. That the invite has been extended. I can ma imagine Paul later picking up on that teaching and extending it even further to the Gentiles. To the non-Jews. To us. In time. And this new group of invitees, these people from the streets, these people who had not known God before then, come to the feast. And it says that the banquet hall is filled with both good and evil, sinners and saints, unrighteous and righteous, all are there together, celebrating and experiencing joy. And the king comes out, and he sees there among the feast a, a man who is not wearing the proper wedding attire, the wedding garments. And he approaches the man and asks him, why, why are you not wearing the garments appropriate for this event, of this occasion? And it says the man is speechless. And so the king has him thrown out. I think this parable is like last week's in that it has both good and bad. There is bad news for those of us who don't accept the invite of God to enter into his kingdom. Bad news in the sense that we will not be brought into a place where we are safe. We will be left to our destruction instead of entering into our salvation. There is good news in the sense that God is seeking out and ever farther reaching out to persons with His grace and inviting them into that feast and that salvation. That, that if 
we were not a part of the original chosen plan that he has gone and changed that plan and has received each of us and invited each of us into his kingdom, into his salvation, into right relationship with him. That no matter whether we are good or evil, righteous or unrighteous, saint or sinner, God has extended that invitation beyond the initial chosen to include us and to include others that aren't here. But with that good news comes a responsibility. That if we are going to accept God's invite, if we are going to enter into his wedding banquet, his heavenly feast, then we need to put on the robes of Christ, that we need to dress ourselves appropriately to be there in God's presence. And I'm not referring to a physical attire at this point, but a spiritual way of being. That if we are going to be a part of God's heavenly banquet, we need to become more like Christ. We need to resemble those who are in the wedding party. We need to look as if we're the bride of Christ. The bride of the Son. And looking like we're the bride of Christ means that we begin to invite others into the feast, that we begin to take up God's work as host to extend his invitation beyond those who are here and chosen, those who have come, and to go out into the streets and to find the people who have not yet received that invitation, to find the people who may have declined the first time and, and to invite them yet again and remind them that God is reaching out and seeking to offer His grace unto them, that God is seeking to be in relationship with them, that He wants them to experience His joy. He wants them to be a part of His community, of His celebration for what he has done in Christ Jesus. He wants them to experience his salvation. As a trinity, God is entirely self-sufficient. He needs nothing outside of himself, and yet God chose to not only create things outside of himself, he chose to love and be a part of the things outside of himself. And he chose to invite his creation to come and be in relationship with him. God does not need us to worship him, to love him, to be a part of him. But he desires us to love him and to be a part of his perfection to be one with him. As a church, as a people who are to put on the robes of Christ, who are to become more Christ-like, we are to take up that mantle, that robe, and begin to see the world as God sees the world, to to even when we feel self-sufficient as a church, as a congregation, and as a community, to find new ways of going out and reaching other people who are there on the streets and highways of life, other people who need to come into our community. That even though you may feel like you have enough friends and loved ones here in this congregation, even though you may feel like this congregation is financially stable and doesn't need any more input, even though you may feel like you need, need not have any more Bible studies or any other events, though you may feel like you are sufficient, we are called to see beyond our self-sufficiency and, and to reach out and offer an invite regardless. To be a people that go into the world and seize the opportunities before us to 
bring others into right relationship with Jesus Christ. I wonder, as a church, a congregation, as individuals, how many opportunities we miss each and every day to share God's love with the people that we encounter. How many people have we walked by on the highways of life? You know, the people in the grocery store, our co-workers, our loved ones, our friends who have yet to experience the kingdom of heaven, who have yet to experience that invite from God to come and be a part of this family. How many times do we miss those opportunities to reach out and to share God's love in the world around us? If we fail to do more than accept God's invite into His kingdom, if we fail to prepare ourselves, if we continue to miss those opportunities, we risk being thrown out of the banquet. We risk being the called but not chosen. God's grace led us to be a part of His church, to be a part of His family. And now His grace is working in our lives to make us more like Him. To make us a people who seek those beyond our walls. Those beyond buildings confining, as our previous song lyric just said. We are called to be the servants who don't miss the opportunities to share God's love. We are called to be the servants who seize those opportunities, who go out into the world, who hit the streets and who bring everyone and anyone in through those doors that we can, whether good or evil, righteous or unrighteous, saint or sinner, whether drug addict or sober, whether sick or well, whether hurting or whole, we find them and we bring them into God's home. That's who we are. That's what we're called to do. May we be a people as individuals and a people as a congregation and a people as a denomination and a people as a religion who so love the world that we give everything to find the lost, the lonely, and the broken and bring them home. Our closing hymn is Softly and Tenderly <coughs> Jesus is Calling, found on 348 of the hymn. Please rise for our closing hymn.